Hello everyone and welcome to another studio episode and today we are working on gap filling and um, seaming, uh, assembly, finishing, other issues like that that you might come across while you're working on 3D printed parts or honestly just a generally any model. As you can see here this part, you know, it has its artifacts from printing. I actually have two of these just so I can, this was one I started on a little bit already. And we're going to just demonstrate with this basic sander here. And we're going to go to town on this bottom torso and just kind of shave off all of this. But you're also sh shaving off some layer lines too, so I mean, honestly, this, this is a necessary thing. But as you go layer by layer, always um, kind of clear away or brush away the area that you're working on. some point here I'll eventually put on gloves. I am wearing a mask, I do assure you of that. Whenever I'm working with a lot of dust, um, I will always wear a mask. Preferably a respirator if you have one. Um, that's going to help you the most against all the volatile stuff that you're, you know, breathing in or not breathing in. <laughs> Albeit, <laughs> try to avoid that, folks. Um, like I said, I've sped this up a bit. Because I don't necessarily want you guys sitting here and watching me sand stuff for an hour. Um, I've cut a segment out of the middle because, it, honestly, the video would have just been forever. And the point here was to kind of demonstrate some techniques. As you can see there, the difference between the sanded and unsanded piece. Um, like I said, keep cleaning up. You know, remove any little blemishes, remove any artifacts. Uh, smooth out any dots. If there's any warping uh, where the supports hit first or the layers were soft, make sure you smooth that stuff out. Those parts are important. And when you're done, um, one of the other things you want to do is you want to go ahead and clean it off with some, uh, I recommend alcohol. I know some folks actually do soapy water. I guess it depends on the resin or material you're working with. I take a toothbrush or an old painter's brush, like the one I use to dust stuff off with, and I will um, go to town and scrub all of the dust off and make it nice and shiny. And while it's still shiny, I'm usually, depending on the surface or what I'm working on, I will grab one of my buff sponges and I will go over the surfaces again while it's still kind of wet and give it kind of like a wet buff. Um, this helps give me an idea of how much of the area I need to continue working on, where my biggest um, issues are, because it smooths out the rest of the area really well that I've sanded up nice. And so, you know, you'll, you'll see, you know, okay, I have a little bit there. There's an artifact here. I need to clean up there. And it gives you a really fair playing field as to what you're looking at. But overall, the quality that you get once you've sanded this down just a tiny little bit. I mean, this is maybe 20 minutes worth of sanding that I've condensed here. And it's really not that back-breaking to get the model piece looking this nice. And obviously, you know, it depends on what it is or how well it was supported. Um, that's going to dictate how much work you have. Um, now these, of course, you know, regardless, you're going to want the smoothest possible parts for like skin and, you know, the different effects and details. So I think it's important to note that as well, regardless of how well it was supported. You're still going to have some finishing to do. Nothing is going to come out and just be ready to assemble. Unfortunately, that's uh, not something we've reached yet. I mean, I have some parts that come out almost ready to assemble, so. Um, as you finish your way around the torso, you know, in this area, again, uh, when you're doing your finishing, just generally remember, you've got two really great tools in this task. You've got your big sanders, you've got your mini sanders, uh, like little sanding sticks that I was just using there. Uh, you've also got your X-Acto knife, which can be used to remove debris or things that are stuck that you can't get out with the sanders that are in fine little corners and spaces that the sanders just can't get into. 
Debuffing Sponge is one of your other great tools too because it allows you to transition or buff out some of the sanding uh, and smooth it in order to make the um, you know the surface nice and smooth and even. Uh, again, you know, once you do most of your sanding, you always want to make sure you clean it. Um, again, again, I recommend isopropyl alcohol. You can do a mixture of water and isopropyl alcohol. Not too much, though, if you're working with um, heavy resins because that's going to be a problem. Now, see, here's an interesting point. This particular print piece, I remember, had an air hole right there in the shoulder. It also had a tear. I don't know. I don't think it was because of the air. The air bubble might have actually been related to the tear in some way, but who knows? This is, there's a tear right there and an air hole at the top. So I actually have a little trick for this, and most of you who do 3D printing probably already know this trick, but if you don't, and if you're not people who do 3D printing and you just do modeling or maybe you buy 3D prints, this is a, this is something that most of us... Yeah, you get your, you get your resin, <laughs> shake it up, pour it in a look up, and... Uh, Get yourself a Q-tip. Doesn't matter what kind. You can use just a generic, you know, regular old Q-tip that you clean your ears with. Um, and then your UV flashlight, of course, as I mentioned last week in your toolkit. And then you're going to want to just take a bit of that resin and you're going to dab it right over the air hole. And then you're going to want to dab it again. And let it sink in. Let it kind of float into that and then dab it right over to that tear. And then just give it the UV for about, I don't know, 3 to 10 seconds, depending on how uh, how much time you really want to give it. And the camera doesn't want to focus too much when I get to there. We go. Uh, but in general, uh, this would be enough. And then you, you cure it right on the piece. Turn your UV light off. Grab one of your sanders. And then immediately start going to town in that area because, honestly, you just want to shave it down while it's still nice and soft. Um... Once you paint over it, it doesn't really matter uh, because you don't really need to go in and over cure it. You're, you're literally filling in microns of material there that wasn't there in these spaces. So, And uh, there you go. We have a little bump there we need to fix, a little deformation. But other than that, you know, you can kind of go over both shoulders and smooth out both sides to make sure that they are even. Uh, but always make sure that you get all the weird bumps or lumps that get left um, from any of the resin. If it moved weird or moved into a crack or crevice, um, try to clean that up as best as possible. You definitely don't want that left over before you start painting. And uh, yeah, as you can see, it's a really great way to patch holes very quickly. You don't have to wait for putty to cure or anything like that. So awesome. I love doing uh, repairs that way on anything that gets little tiny holes or pockets. That's a great way to fix stuff. So that's a nice little trick right there for anybody who's looking for a trick of the trade. Now for this we're just going to go ahead and continue on sanding and um, we're eventually going to get to a point where I'm going to join these pieces, but I want to clean everything off, dry off all the pieces first. Um, yeah, we always use, that is, by the way, uh, a gap filling medium model expo Instacure Plus. The reason I use it is because it works very well as a gap filler. So it will actually aid us in filling the gap between the two parts. So what we do is I put a generous amount of glue on one side and the other. Um, so I, I know it's gonna squeeze out a bit, but we'll wipe that off with a Q-tip. And we'll go ahead and squash those together. It's about two to five seconds, maybe 10, depending on the size of the part or how big of a glop of glue you put on there. <laughs> they can take a little longer. If you glue, gloop on the glue a little too hard, it won't dry so fast. Um, then what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna take your resin again, and we're gonna just apply it around the seam. And we're going to do kind of the same technique, but we're just going to apply that around the seam where we have the top and the lower half meeting there. And you will probably have to do this multiple times. You're probably going to have to fill and then sand and then probably go over it again and then sand until you can't feel the join between the two parts 
with your finger, you're going to need to continue going over it again. Because if you can feel it, the paint will seep in to the crack and it will it will show when you paint it. Uh, so you, you want to make sure that you get it to a point where there is nothing you can feel with your fingertip. You want to be able to run your fingertip along that line and literally just feel like it, it, it doesn't exist. Even if you can see parts of it because one of the issues that I overcame early on was that you had to deal with the fact that even though the resin is gray, sometimes you layer it over those areas with the glue and the glue has already filled the gap. So the gap is actually technically, it still looks clear or transparent. And you still feel like there's a gap there, but when you run your finger over it, or you can use a Q-tip if it's an area that you can't reach, and you can do that in that area, you can make sure as long as it doesn't snag or stop over that area, then you know that it is not catching and it is not um, uh, uneven. And so that's really what you're concerned with. See right here where I'm pointing to is that area looks like it might have a gap or hole, which you can use a Q-tip. You can say, okay, that has a little tiny, you know, bit of a gap there. And there's nothing that this Q-tip can actually detect. There's no stopping, but there's no actual gap. The back, however, no visual gap is detectable. So anyway, that is it for this episode, guys. Hope you all enjoyed watching this one. Uh, we're going to post some pictures of the finished model pieces and stuff and painted piece once it's done. Hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, leave us a like and a comment and let us know what you think. See you all again soon.